My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about traveling. We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today we're going to be reading a story called One World, Many Colors. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see lots of different clues on this cover. The well, first thing I notice is there's different rings of color all over the cover. So I see some pink in the corner, some yellow, green, blue, red. And I notice that there are a lot of different things in each of the colorful rings. So I see this dragon, I see a double-decker bus, I see different plants in the green, and I see some sunflowers and a little yellow taxi cab in the yellow. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. One World, Many Colors with words by Ben Lerwell and pictures by Alette Strahoff. We share one world. We share many colors. White shines and sparkles. It's in the desert of Amman. An Arabian oryx is moving through the sand dunes. The animal has strong legs and long, sharp horns. It's in icy Antarctica. At the bottom of the world, penguins are swimming and seals are resting on the shore. The frozen land furls out forever. It's in sunny Australia. The Sydney Opera House is moon bright in the morning light. Fairies are crossing the harbor and clouds are floating in the sky. Pink blooms and brightens. It's in the blossom of Japan. In, in springtime, the cherry trees grow thousands of little flowers. The petals are light and soft. It's in a sweet smelling Paris bakery. Look, pink macarons and trays full of cakes and pastries. Which treat would you choose? show you a tool that we can use today. So we've already seen a lot of different places that you can travel to in the world. And I have a globe here, which is a tool that we can use to show us where different things are on our planet. So I'm coming to you from North America, which is here. And we've already seen a few different places in the story. So we've seen Japan, which is over here. And we've seen Australia, which is over here. And we've seen Antarctica, which is actually all the way at the bottom there. So if you have a globe at home, or if you have a paper map, or if you can look at a map on the internet on your computer, you can follow along while we read the story because there's lots of different places that we're gonna to travel to today. Should we find out where we're gonna go next? It's on a wide lake in Kenya. The flamingos are balancing on long legs. Some are dipping their beaks in the water. The birds live under big African skies. Yellow glows and gleams. It's in a soccer stadium in Brazil. 
The fans are cheering and singing songs. When their team scores a goal, they give a roar as loud as thunder. It's on the streets of New York City. The taxi cabs are honking their horns. People are hurrying this way and that under buildings that stretch up to the sky. What do you see on these pages that's yellow? It's in the sunflower fields of Spain. The flowers are swaying in the breeze. There are too many to count. The only sound is the whisper of the wind. Let's imagine that we're in this sunflower field in Spain. What do you think you might hear as you stood amongst the flowers? What do you think you might be able to smell? What do you think you might feel on your face or what do you think you might feel on your fingertips? Blue shimmers and soars. It's in the deep ocean. The blue whale is the giant of the seas, the biggest animal on planet Earth. Its enormous tail moves slowly and steadily as it swims. It's in the sky above Mount Everest. The mountain is so high that it can take two whole months for climbers to reach the top. What do you think it would feel like to reach the top of Mount Everest? It's in the Canadian woods in winter. Shh, it's a blue jay. All the trees are covered in glittering snow. The bird's bright feathers help to keep it warm. What colors do you see where you live? Green glistens and grows. It's in the wilds of South Africa. A chameleon is slinking along a branch. It's green now, but it has a secret. It can change color to match its background. It's in the countryside of Vietnam. The farmers in the rice field are wearing wide hats to shelter from the sun. The field is very green, so the rice is nearly ready. It's in the Amazon rainforest. The tangled green jungle is swarming with life. Monkeys and toucans, jaguars and parrots, butterflies and snakes. How many animals can you see? Let's see who we can find on this page in the Amazon rainforest. Do you see the jaguars? Let's see one here. And another one hiding here. Do you see the toucans? Those are a kind of bird. I see one right here. How about the monkeys? Can you find them? I see some playing up here. Red dances and dreams. It's in Hong Kong at Chinese New Year. Lanterns are hanging in rows and fireworks are bursting in the night sky. The lanterns give off a rosy glow. It's in London at rush hour. A double-decker bus is driving across Westminster Bridge. Drifting everywhere are the noises of the city. It's in Egypt at sunset. The pyramids are old, mighty, and silent. As the day ends, the sun's last rays wash the ancient stones in red light. We share one world. We share many colors. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about traveling today, let's think about taking a mode of transportation that we might use if we were going on a big trip. 
Are you going to take a big van and take a road trip with your family and friends? Or are you going to take a big ship that cuts through the waves in the ocean? Or are you going to take an airplane and get to see the world from way up high? So you decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going... Ooh, wow. That was a really long journey today. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about traveling today, we're going to take a journey in our mind today in order to be mindful. So to begin, let's all get into a comfortable position. And we're going to take a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. Now, let's imagine a place that makes us feel really calm. Maybe your calm place is high up on a mountaintop and there's snow all around you. Maybe you're in a giant field full of flowers and beautiful plants. Or maybe you're on a beach and you see the ocean waves crashing towards you. Or maybe you're somewhere completely different. So imagine what you see in your calm place. Now, let's think about what it, the ground feels like below us. What do you feel? Do you feel cool grass between your fingertips? Or maybe you feel gritty sand? Maybe it's really cold and wet from the snow. So think about what the ground feels like below you. Now, let's draw our attention to our noses. What do you smell in your calm place? Now, let's use our ears and listen really closely. What do you hear in your calm place? Let's listen closely. Now, start to bring some awareness back to where you are right now. Maybe you can wiggle your fingers or wiggle your toes. If you'd like, you can open your eyes again. We can take one more big deep breath in through our nose, out through our mouths. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Look carefully at this work of art. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? Let's make sure we can see all parts of this painting. What more can we find? This is a painting by an artist named Henry Asawa Tanner. It's called Gateway Tangier. Henry Asawa Tanner, an African-American artist, traveled frequently and his trips had an effect on the style and subjects of his paintings. What is your most favorite place that you've visited? It could be somewhere far away or somewhere just down the street. Did you bring back something to remember your trip by? What was it? During a trip to Tangier, Morocco, Henry Asawa Tanner became interested in the rounded arch that you see pictured here. This is a gateway that serves as the entrance to the Kasbah, or the older part of the city. He painted it from many different perspectives in various works of art. Picture your favorite place in your mind. What do you see? What colors do you notice? How does it make you feel to think about that place? Let's see how another artist was inspired by a special place when creating their artwork. We're going to look at this work of art from up close first. What do you notice? Let's zoom out to get a different view. What new details can you see now? 
let's zoom out one last time to get the full view of this work of art. What do you see? Find a line at the bottom of the painting where the road begins. Hold your finger in the air and follow the line to see where it leads you. Did you notice anything new? This is a painting by an artist named Vincent van Gogh. It's called Stairway at Auvers. Van Gogh was inspired by the different places he lived over his lifetime, including Auvers. He created many paintings during his time living in auvers sur -Oise. Imagine you were walking down the street alongside one of the pairs of people you see here. What might you see on your walk? What catches your eye? You can be inspired by travels to faraway places like Henry Osawa Tanner, or you can be inspired by a simple walk down your street like we see in the painting by Vincent van Gogh. Where will your travels take you next? If you'd like, you can talk about a journey you plan to take with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So get in your van and take your road trip with your friends and family, or get in that big ship, or hop in your airplane and fly way up in the sky, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own travel notebooks. So artists often carry notebooks with them when they go on trips, both to places that are near or places that are far away. They might use these notebooks to write or draw things that they see or things that they're inspired by. So you can use your notebook that you're gonna make today to write and draw things that inspire you, whether it's on a trip to a new place or a trip to a place that you visit all the time. Um, so we're gonna need a few different things for our project today. You're going to need different kinds of paper and it doesn't matter what kind of paper you use. So I've got some kind of scrap paper from art projects I've done before. I found a notebook that had a few extra pages in it that I hadn't used yet, so I ripped those out. I've got some pages from magazines um, and other you know, kind of just plain paper that I found around my home. So it doesn't matter what kind, they can be different sizes, different colors. Um, we're also going to need a scissors or glue um, I also have tape, so you can use tape or glue, doesn't matter. Um, I've got a pencil or something sharp to kind of poke a hole with. If you have a hole punch, that would work too. And this is something that you're going to need your grown-ups help to do. Um, I've got some masking tape um, and I have some string and some crayons. Now there's lots of different ways to make notebooks. Um, so I'm going to show you just a couple different ways um, that you can make them today. So one way that you can make your travel notebook is if you have any kind of plain, bigger piece of paper. So this is just a plain sheet of white paper. Um, and you can actually make kind of an accordion notebook. So I'm just going to cut this piece of paper into a few different strips. And for this technique, you really just want longer kind of thin sheets of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them into little accordions and then combine them to make a small notebook. So this is a good technique to use if you want to make kind of a mini notebook. So see, I'm just kind of folding it back and forth, back and forth. And your folds don't have to be precise. And so see now when I open all the folds, I have some pages. So I'm gonna do that again so I can attach the different accordions together. So I'm gonna fold it forward, and I'm gonna flip it and fold that side, then I'm gonna flip it again and fold that forward. So kind of like you're making a little zigzag. And this one I have a little extra, so I might use my scissors and cut that part off. So now I have two accordions that I can glue or tape together. So I'm going to take the last piece of this accordion and the first piece of this one and I'm going to attach them together with glue or tape. So I'm going to use my glue stick for that. So I'm just going to put some glue on this accordion and then attach the last piece of that accordion together. And now I have a little accordion notebook with a bunch of different pages in it that I can draw or write on. And you can make a cover for this. 
you can draw on and make a cover. So that's just one technique to make a tiny little travel notebook. The next technique I'm gonna show you is to make kind of a bigger notebook. And this is where you can use all your different kinds of sheets of paper together. So first, when you're kind of creating your bigger travel notebook, you just wanna have kind of all your different paper together. Think about what pages you like, if there's maybe um, pictures or images that you might wanna use for the cover, or what kind of pages you want on the inside of your notebook. So what are you gonna use this notebook for? Are you gonna draw in it? Are you gonna write in it? Are you gonna do both? Um, so sometimes different magazine pages might be better or worse for this. So this page has a lot of writing on it, but I can easily draw over it and still see what it is. Whereas this page that I have here might not be great for drawing or writing on, but it could still be fun to include in my notebook just to have kind of a fun image of a turtle if that's what you want to include. So first step is to kind of combine our pages together. So. I think I like this. This is an old scrap piece of paper from an art project that I used. And I like this size of a notebook. So you can kind of think about what size you want your notebook to be. And then you can kind of just think about piling your paper on top of each other. So I definitely want some of my old notebook sheets together. And I think this is gonna be kind of, this is a good sturdy piece of paper for my cover. So I'm gonna kind of build on top of that. So I'm gonna use a notebook page. I might use this page, and don't worry if they're not the same size. You can either leave them different sizes or I'll show you how to kind of cut them down so they're all the same size. I do like that image of a turtle. I think that's really fun. Or, oh, I have this jellyfish one too. So I might add that. We could do some drawing or, or writing on that pretty blue color. I might add another notebook page. And now I think that's a good amount of pages for my notebook. And you can add as many or as few as you want. And I really like this image with different desserts on it. I might use that for my cover. I really like to try new foods when I travel. Uh, so that could be a fun thing to add on the cover of my travel notebook. So now that I have kind of my collection of pages here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold So I have my notebook now. And now what I can do is I can actually cut off the edges here so that they're all the same size. If you like that, or you can leave them like this too. Sometimes it's kind of fun to have different um, shapes and lines kind of coming out the edge. But I'm gonna cut these off today to show you how to do that. So I'm just kind of cutting them so they all fit around the cover of my notebook. these can go back into my making stuff box. So those are good papers to use for other things. So now I have all these different pages that I can use to draw or write in for my notebook. Now, how do we get it to be a notebook? We need to do something to attach it, right? So there's a few different ways you can combine your notebook together so that all your pages remain intact. You can use a stapler. So I do have a stapler here with me and you definitely wanna have a grown up to help you to do that. And you can just staple the middle of your pages. So that's one option if you have a stapler. The other option is if you have some string lying around and you have something that you can poke a hole with, you can also do that and then create kind of a tie. Uh, so I'm gonna do that today. So I'm just gonna use a pencil cause I don't have a hole punch. And I'm just gonna poke my pencil through and I'm gonna make two holes. And you definitely want to have a grown up help you do that. So now I have my two holes through my pages and I'm going to use some string here to tie it together. And I'm going to weave this one through here. And then I'm going to put the other end through this side. And then I'm going to do my tie on the outside, but you could also do your tie on the inside. It's up to you. tie it in a knot or a bow or have your grown-up help you do that part. And now my notebook is all together with my pages, which is kind of nice. So now you can think about what you want the cover of your notebook to look like. So 
So I mentioned that I found this page in a magazine and I really like some of these desserts that are on here. So I might cut out some images to put on my notebook. And maybe you found images of places that you'd like to visit someday. Or maybe you found kind of shapes and colors that you think are interesting. And remember, the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have. So you can make a notebook out of any kind of paper. Does not matter. And then you can use that notebook to do so many different things. Drawing, writing, painting. Another fun thing to make a notebook out of is artwork that maybe you've already made. So drawings or paintings that you have around that you're not really sure what to do with, those can make great notebooks, sort of like a great cover for your notebook. So now I have my pastries. Getting hungry just looking at them. And I think this is gonna make a great cover for my, maybe now this is gonna be my food travel notebook and I can record different foods I might wanna try. And I might just wrap this around my cover here. I remember with collaging, you can cut and paste as you go. You can cut everything and then paste all at the end. It's up to you. You can decorate the front or the back, or you can just leave it plain. It's your travel notebook, so you get to decide what you want it to look like. going to keep mine really simple today and that's going to be my travel notebook with all of my different pages inside. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a travel notebook that I made. So this is the one that we made together. This is my food travel notebook that I made using different recycled paper that I had lying around my home and I poked some holes in it and attached it with a string, but you could also use a stapler or tape to combine your pages together. Uh, and then another travel notebook that I made is a very small one. I made this one using the accordion technique that I showed you. Um, and I cut out a piece of paper that I found to make a cover for it. Um, and this can be my tiny little travel notebook. So there's lots of different ways to make notebooks for sketching and writing. We would love to see yours. You can share them on social media and use the hashtag STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.